Good morning. Today I'll be reading Psalms 91 verses 1 and 2. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Let's bow our head in a word of prayer. As we gather today around your name, we pray that you will fill our hearts, our minds, and our souls. Transform us, Lord, and make us more like you. I pray that the people who have gotten COVID and still has it gets through it. I pray that everyone who is going through stuff right now, that they get through it, because God is always there. And in the name of Jesus, I pray that this violence stops, and I pray that this world gets better. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Bless the name of our God, our wonderful God, our true and living Savior. We thank God for you on this day. We thank God for this day. We glorify him and magnify him because he is worthy to be praised. Come on, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, stop what you're doing. Put those hands together and give our big God a worthy praise. Come on, hallelujah. He's a worthy God deserving of a worthy place and we glorify him hallelujah this morning in this place hallelujah come on put your hands together
to be glorified here on earth. We want God to be glorified in the living temple of God. Come on, touch yourself, say, I am the living temple. And the Lord my God shall be glorified. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We want the Lord our God to be glorified because he is everything. He's everything to me. He's everything that we need. Everything that we hope and desire is tied up, wound up. Hallelujah. And attached to God. Hallelujah. God, we tell you, you are our everything. Everything. Receive a simple word of praise, oh God. Hallelujah. Everything. I guess so. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) Oh, bless you, Jesus.
stand up on your feet and begin to groove. Hallelujah. For the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Give us the best you got. Give God the praise for he's right. Yes, he's worthy. of our God and we thank him for being our everything. Come on, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, rejoice. Yeah. Hallelujah. Rejoice in the goodness of our God. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Good morning, church, and praise the Lord. This is LRBC News. I am Lady Latama McRae reporting. Today is Sunday, March 14th, 2021. I am extending a warm welcome to you, the Little Rock Baptist Church family, and our friends who are worshiping with us at The Rock. We love you and we hope you are blessed by our online worship experience. <clears throat> Help us spread the gospel by following us on Facebook Live and YouTube, by liking and sharing today's virtual worship experience, and also by taking and posting your selfie, hashtag worshiping at the rock. <clears throat> this is a great opportunity to share with you all our vision, mission statement, and motto. Our vision is to become a transformed people through the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to be a Christian community of faith with a heart to meet people where they are. Our mission statement is to exalt our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through a lifestyle of worship, to evangelize the unbeliever through our Christian witness, to empower and edify the believer through the preaching and teaching of God's word, to work to create a culture and an atmosphere that is conducive for lives to be changed through the power of the Holy Spirit. In other words, our core values are worship, witness, and God's word as we work to change lives. And we all know our motto. There is no rock like Little Rock because we stand on the big rock. Upcoming events. Sunday, March 28th is Palm Sunday and Senior Citizen Day. Pastor McCray wants to see you. So on Sunday, March 28th at 1 p.m., please drive by the church with your masks on, remain inside your vehicles 
so Pasta and myself can issue you your palms. We hope to see you there. Remember, you're driving up and you're driving by. Join us for Sunday school at 9 a.m. every Sunday morning on Zoom. Please contact Dr. Marriott to retrieve the Zoom ID and password, or you may gain access with the information on your screen. Join us for Wednesday in the Word at 6.30 a.m. for our Consecrated Conversation Conference Call and at 7 p.m. for our Bible study via Facebook Live, Zoom, and YouTube. Our LRBC masks are still available at $8 each. You're contacting Pastor McCray for purchase. It's offering time. Thank you so much for your liberal giving during this pandemic. Let us remain consistent by sending in your tithes, your offering, building fund, and your online worship support. Continue to use the four ways to give that are on your screen. Option one, mail your gift to the church at 375 Bristol Street. That's Brooklyn, New York, 11212. Option two, you can contact your deacon or your deaconess for pickup. Option three, lrbcgiving at gmail.com via Zelle. Option four, dollar sign, Little Rock Give via Cash App. My brothers and my sisters, let us continue to say stay safe during this pandemic. Continue to wear your masks, wash your hands, stay six feet apart, no large gatherings, get yourself tested so you can know where you are and educated about the vaccine. It's better to be safe than sorry. March is Women's History Month. Let us honor and celebrate all women who have been influential in the world and in our personal lives. We've missed our January and February birthdays. We want to take this time to wish you all, all of our members who celebrated a very happy birthday. May you live as long as you want and never want as long as you live. Well, that's my time. So much for your attention. This has been your rock report. I am Lady Latama McRae. Now, let's get back to the sanctuary so we can enjoy our online virtual worship experience. Love ya. We've come to give God all of our worship. Come on, give him the best you got today. Hallelujah, surrender everything that you are to God, hallelujah.
bless you, God. Open up your mouth and glorify our God, our true and living God. Hallelujah. Give him the gift of your worship. Hallelujah. 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 Here's my worship. All of my worship. I will not be silent. As long as I'm breathing, I will worship the Lord. Thank you, praise team, for that wonderful reminder of the responsibility of every blood-bought believer. God has created you and I for worship. To lift up holy hands. Hallelujah. Lift up our voices and our hearts to give God our worship, our praise, and our adoration. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt God's name together. I'm so happy to be in your presence again virtually this second Sunday to give God all that we've got. What a mighty God we serve. Uh, I don't want to hold your patience, but we certainly want to give God the glory and honor and to all of our officers and clergy and you, my brothers and sisters and friends who are with us on this live this morning. I greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for it is at the name of Jesus that every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father. I want you to uh, grab whatever copy of God's word you have, if it's on your tablet or your phone, Perhaps you have a tangible Bible uh, at your home that you're using. Whatever you, copy of God's Word that you have, and would you navigate your way to Mark's Gospel, Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. A very familiar passage of Scripture. And I believe this Word will encourage us in these times. Mark chapter 5, beginning at verse number 25. Mark chapter 5, verse number 25. There you will find these words recorded. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and, nothing, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched me? And his, and his Disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee and saying, Thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what, she, what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made the whole go in peace and be a whole of thy plague uh, I want to drop down a verse uh, those 27 and 28 verses I want to lift in your hearing rather uh, when she had heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment for she said if I may touch but his clothes I shall 
behold. I want to preach on the topic as the Spirit of the Lord shall guide. Push to Jesus. Push to Jesus. Push to Jesus. Will you pray with me? O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. We pause, O oh God, to give you glory. What is man or woman that thou art mindful of him or her and the son of man that visited them? God, we thank you for your grace and mercy and how much you care for us and concerned about our well-being. Uh, we give you the glory. And now, God, we pause to hear a word from you. And, Lord, I realize I can't preach lest you preach through me. Move. I can't move lest you move me. I can't walk lest you hold my hand. Oh, God, hide me behind thine rugged cross that men, women, boys, and girls will see you and not me and take me out of self and use me for your divine glory. Decrease me, pray now that you may increase in the name of Jesus and God if I'm too high. Bring me down if I'm too low. Pick me up if I'm too far. Draw me in. Give me your power to preach to your people. And my prayer this morning is that someone will be saved. Someone will be healed. Someone will be set free. Someone even be encouraged through the preaching and teaching of your gospel. And now, Lord, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. That all who love the Lord shout amen. amen. Would you write on the comment section? Just, just write on the comment section. Push to Jesus. Hallelujah. If the truth be told, my brothers and sisters, issues are part of life. And the sooner each of us are able to wrap this reality around our minds, the better you and I will be able to meet the challenges of life with the proper attitude and perspective. From the Christian to the non-believer, to the Jew or the Gentile, black, white, yellow, or green, no matter what your race, creed, economic status, political party, or geographic location, life's issues have no preference. What's interesting about issues, beloved, are uh, they're they're interesting because it is rare we are dealing with one issue at a time we we all are familiar with the saying if it ain't one thing it's another and, and life's issues come in droves they come as a group they seem to come uh uh, in droves Mo most of us are dealing with a multiplicity of issues and if you and I can be transparent if we are honest with one another we could we would admit we are dealing with various issues in our lives some of us are dealing with physical health issues some some are dealing with socio-economic issues uh, uh, the, the, the ideology of white supremacy raised in a single family home, poverty, grew up poor, lack of education, divorce or separation, inadequate housing, homelessness, if you will, financial irresponsibility or instability. I'm telling you, we all got some issues. Some of us are dealing with emotional issues. Can y'all holler back at me and shout emotional issues? Suffering from depression, heartbroken, mentally abused, disappointed, mistreated, uh, physically abused, dealing with anxiety, drug and alcohol abuse. We all got one issue or another. And I'm here to let you know we all have issues. If you don't know now, if you don't, if you don't think you've got issues now, I want to tell you to just keep on living because the reality is all of us will deal with our share of issues i was i was reading an email a year, uh, some years back from uh, from the pastor uh, from the famous pastor pastor rick warren the author of the book entitled the purpose driven life and this email was an interview regarding the success of the book while dealing with the diagnosis and treatment of his wife's cancer and in the interview paul warren uh uh, made some powerful statements and one of his statements or quotes was life is a series 
of problems or issues. Either you are in one now, you're, you're just coming out of one, or you're going or you're getting ready to go into another one. He, another quote that was interesting and stood out to me was, I, he, said, he said, I used to think that life was hills and valleys. You go through a dark time, then you go to the mountaintop, back and forth. I don't believe that anymore. Rather than life being hills and valleys, it's kind of like two rails on a railroad track. And, and at all times, you have something good and something bad going on in your life. Uh, the last quote, the last two quotes, he said, no matter how good things are in your life, there is always something bad that needs to be worked on. Somebody write on the comment section issues. You, 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 you can focus on your problems, Rick Warren said, or you can focus on, uh, you can focus on your purpose or you can focus on your problem. The easiest way to get rid of your pain or your issues is to get your focus off yourself and onto Jesus. And is there anybody on this line that have that same testimony that you might have some issues, you might have some problems, you might have some circumstances, but you're trying as hard as you can to live a life that have your eyes focused on Jesus. That some of us, we might be dealing with some tough problems and I know that all of us are dealing with we're in the midst of a hard time some tough problems and situations that we have been enduring and but let me tell you you got to keep your eyes on Jesus and if you're dealing uh you got some issues you're dealing with and made up in your mind that if you can just push to Jesus I want to hear to let you know that if you can just keep on pressing until something happens God will open doors for you God will make everything all right and I might have some health issues but I'm pushing to Jesus because the Bible that I read declare in Isaiah but he was wounded for our transgression and he would bruise for our iniquity the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes I'm ill, healed. I'm here to tell you that you can testify that you might have problems, but but I'm pushing, baby, uh, because the Bible said, "But my God shall supply all my needs according to His riches in Christ Jesus." Let me tell you, keep on pushing. Let me encourage you this morning. Keep on pressing because. Uh, that there's a uh, there's a cute little saying that, but it's true but my brothers it's nice theology the, uh, there is blessing in the oppressing uh, and I'm going to get my focus off the pandemic I'm trying to get my focus off the vaccine and worrying about the vaccine I'm trying to get my focus off of racism I'm trying to keep my focus off of all of the vicissitudes of life all I'm trying to do is keep my eye on Jesus and as we look at this text my brothers and sisters and examine this familiar Bible account we find Jesus in the midst of ministry Jesus had finished casting out the demon and the man named Legion and, and, and on his way to Jairus' daughter's house uh, Jairus's house to see about Jairus's daughter Mark's gospel records an encounter between Jesus and and a certain woman, the, the, uh, this woman where the Bible doesn't reveal her name. We, we read of a woman who certainly had her share of issues. And before, but before we can continue, it's important to identify this woman's circumstances, this woman's issues. Her, her primary issue, number one, was she was sick. She, she was continually bleeding or hemorrhaging for 12 long years and the significance of her issue is made clear in uh in the old testament if you go to chapter 15 of leviticus moses and aaron were instructed by god on how to deal with one who had an issue of blood as it relates to worship in other words uh that text tells us in other words when a woman had a discharge of blood for many days 
at a time other than her monthly menstruation or had a discharge that continued beyond her period. She was considered unclean and as long as she had the discharge. Y'all hear what I'm saying? For 12 long years, this woman was dealing with this one particular issue and was considered unclean y'all y'all getting weak and weary over this issue we dealing with for just one year this woman had the same issue can y'all holler back at your boy and shout same issue she had the same issue for 12 years that's her primary issue she she was a social outcast due to her condition her issue her second issue is this she went to many doctors and they all left her down in other words in fact she got ver worse in verse number 26 it said and and had suffered many things of many physicians uh, the contemporary english version declared she had gone to many doctors and they had not done anything except cause her a lot of pain and anybody ever tried to deal with man or woman to solve your issue and they let you down I found out the hard way my brothers and sisters can't nobody do you like Jesus I love my mama and I love daddy I tried brother sister I even tried cousin Ray Ray and Nook Nook and I found out that they can't fix my dilemma her second issue y'all and she was she she had she was she was uh her second issue was man had let her down here it is but here's her third issue i told you she had a whole lot of issues her third issue is she spent all her money trying to correct her problem i told you at the beginning of the message that money i told you i'm to tell i need to tell you that money can't help you her her third issue was she was broke her money was funny her chain was strange here's verse number 26b she had paid them all the money that she had maybe maybe y'all always have money in your life maybe you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth but let me tell you i've dealt with the situation and circumstance with my life in my life where i didn't have enough i had more month than i had money anybody ever been broke I, I, oh y'all y'all acting funny y'all acting like you always had money all your life let me let me ask you that again anybody never had any money anybody ever been in a situation where your money where you didn't have money to do what you needed to do this woman had no money let, let, let's recap her issues. She, she's a social outcast. She, her doctor's man had let her down. Now she's broke. Aside from those issues, she had something that stood between her condition and the solution. She's I got a crowd in the way. There is something that is prohibiting her from getting to her solution. And while pursuing Jesus, the crowd can get in your way. And beloved, our issues are allowed in our life to build our character but here the crowd is designed to distract us or keep us consumed with other issues ultimately keeping our focus off Jesus and a few examples of the crowd is people can be your crowd uh, your, your, your boo do, do you know your boo can be your crowd your, your significant other can get in the way of your view of Jesus do you know family can Oh, y'all won't talk to me today. Them can be the worst Negroes. Family can get in your way. Friends can get in your way. Worry and anxiety can get in your way. Do you know your worry of the pandemic is probably getting in your way of your eyes being focused on Jesus? And I don't know what your crowd is, but I'm going, I'm not going to let nothing or anybody or anything get in the way of my pursuit of Jesus. I'm not going to let the opinion of man or woman, I'm not going to let sickness, financial problems, negative Negroes, family, loved ones, husband, wife, friends, or foe. Is there anybody on this live that can jump up out of your seat, leave that pancake alone, and say, I'm not going to let nothing get in the way between me and Jesus. Oh, uh, But let me ask you a few questions. How, how can we push 
through the crowd. Uh, as I read this text, I, I had to ask myself a series of interrogatives. How can we get past our current issue to get to Jesus? How can we reach our destiny moment? Woo! How, how can we get delivered like this woman? I, I'm out of here, y'all. I told y'all I was going to be fast. Point number one is you got to have faith. Can, can, can you say faith? Faith. Faith. All, all it takes, my brothers and sisters, is faith the size of a mustard seed. You, you, you see, you don't, need, you don't need a whole lot of faith to get your situation dealt with with Jesus because Jesus has got more medicine in the hem of his garment than any drugstore in the entire world. All you need to do is have faith in the one and if you've got the faith, God's got the power. Let me tell you something. Faith is what pulls the power from God to change our situation. Let me help you. Uh, it ain't nothing. All it is is faith. The faith in God is what literally pulls out the virtue from heaven to change your dilemma. Look at somebody in your house and say, all you need is faith. Your faith. You don't need money. You don't need people. All you need is faith in God. J Jesus told this woman, hear me, when he turned to her, he said, thy faith have made thee whole. <laughs> uh, but, but here it is, number one, all you need is faith. But here it is, faith literally means trusting in God and firm conviction or firm persuasion. And, 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 and I want to help you. I want to ask you, is anybody persuaded? Because if you got faith, then you you're in the, the living embodiment of a persuaded individual. Uh, persuaded that can't nobody do you like Jesus. Are you persuaded that God is a healer and a deliverer and a savior and a redeemer? I don't know what Jesus you serving, but I found out that God, Jesus, is a shelter in the time of my storms. And, and I found out he's a rock in a weary land. He's a counselor. He's my teacher. Can anybody shout, he's my everything the Roman Romans helped us with this point and said for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor no powers nor things present y'all hold me for a moment I'm almost through no things to come nor height nor Death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, I'm trying to tell you that I am persuaded. And is there anybody on this life? that made up in your mind that you are persuaded shout yeah but I got one more thing and I'm gonna let you go that your persuasion produces persistence shout yeah you gotta have faith you got to be persuaded but then you got to move with persistence can you shout I am persistent uh, it took persistence uh, to push through the crowd uh, and get to Jesus uh, eyes looking at her uh, people looking down on her uh, bleeding in her body uh, broke in her pocket uh, but she made up in my mind uh, that if I can just get to Jesus uh, I know he'll make me whole uh, and I wonder is there anybody here uh, that feels like this certain woman uh, that knew that if she can just get through the mess uh, if she can get what's holding her back uh, if she can just push through if she could just push through the crowd uh, she was persistent uh, and I want to tell you uh, as I leave you today uh, don't get weary in well-doing. Keep on 
looking at Jesus because I found out that he will he will pick you up he will turn you around he will place your feet on solid ground keep on pushing press until something happened because the Hebrew writer declare that he is he is he is a rewarder of them that diligently diligently seek him can I ask you a question who are you seeking are you chasing after the Lord I don't know about you but every day of my life I am chasing the Lord because he will he will keep me from falling he will lift up my bow down head he will he will he will open doors shout yeah look down your house tell them keep on pushing push through the crowd push through your trial push through your hurt push through your pain push through the pandemic push Somebody shout, push, say yeah, ah, push, y'all ain't pushing yet, holla push, I'm going to get the Jesus, get out of my way, fear and anxiety, depression and despondency, get out of my way, devil and the demons, shout yeah, friend and foe, get out of my way, I'm running to Jesus, see yeah, I don't know about y'all, but I feel alright, say yeah, I'm going, I'm finished, I'm finished, I'm finished. Hey! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Push. Push through your crowd. Press until something happens. Something about this woman that knew Jesus was able to fix her dilemma. And I want to help you today. That same Jesus. Come on, holler. The same Jesus. That same Jesus is available. For you and I today, you got to have faith, got to be persuaded, and walk with persistence. And look what Jesus did all through the crowd. He noticed this one woman in the crowd. The disciples said, Jesus, you, you tripping all these people. What do you mean somebody touched you? He said, somebody here had enough faith to pull the power out of me. And do you know every day as we walk in, through this pandemic and problem protests, every day our faith is pulling power from Jesus to allow. You wondering why you can work all day. You wondering how you can keep functioning in this dysfunction. How you keep on doing all the things that you've been doing. How you're still able to pay your bills. It's because you've you found out that when you have faith in God. And when you're persuaded that can't nobody do you like Jesus. When you got the persistence to know that if I just keep my eyes on Jesus, he will give me what, my, what I need. That's why. Because your faith is pulling down God's power. And the same faith is available. The same Jesus is available to you today, my brother and sister. Perhaps you're on this line and you don't know this Jesus that I'm talking about. I want to offer this Jesus to you today. This same Jesus who healed all manner of diseases. This same Jesus who, who many thought would not even speak to a woman like this. This same Jesus who spoke to those who were outcasts, who, who, who the crowd and others thought were not worthy to even be around. Jesus engaged those and he will engage you. You, you haven't done anything too low that God is not able to pick you up. That's my testimony not always been saved, I've not always done the right thing, but God was able to pick me up and clean me and, 
and use me for his glory. He can do the same thing for you. Perhaps that's you. If that's you, just write your name on the comment section and repeat these words. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. I've tried everything else. I've not been perfect. I've, ne I've not crossed every T and dotted every I in my life. I've made some mistakes. But I know that you, after hearing this word, that you, 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 you'll see something in me. That you'll deal with me, someone like me. Thank you for your grace. God, clean me up. Touch, heal, and deliver. I believe you were born of a virgin. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose from the dead. And I believe one day, I'll be with you in heaven. Thank you for saving me. Friend, my brother, my friend, my brother, my sister, if you've repeated that prayer and believed it in your heart and you've already confessed it with your mouth, the Bible says you are saved. That simply means that you have been rescued from hell and you're on your way to heaven. If, that's, if, if there's someone on the line that perhaps that's you and you're not a member of any church and you've watched a whole lot of virtual services but something about this service is connecting with you we'd love to have you if that's you write your name on the comment section somebody will get to you and make sure and bring you into the fold of the little rock baptist church we're getting ready to pray now so if you, if you my brother and sister will you begin to write those names on the comment section Hallelujah. Thank you so much for helping me with this prayer list. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Write those names down. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's pray together. Let's whisper words of prayer. God, we thank you. If we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, your power and your might. Thank you for holding us on every leaning side. We give you the glory, O oh God, because you're worthy of the praise. The word says from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be praised. And we give you glory. We pause to worship you before we ask you anything. We thank you, O oh God, for everything. Thank you for being good to us in spite of us. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for loving us. At times we are, when we are not, we don't always behave lovingly. You still love us with a reckless love and we give you glory. Thank you for everything that you have given to us. And now God, all we want to do is give you our best in return for all that you've been to us. Bless our families, bless our situation, bless our circumstances. Help us to keep on having faith be persuaded and persistent to keep on pushing to you in the midst of the crowd, whatever our crowds are, help us to push through, just like this woman in the text. In the name of Jesus. I lift up every name on the comment section, one by one, name by name, every family that's represented. God, you know everything about us. You know every circumstance. You know, every issue that's been placed on the comment section. And by faith, now we are walking to you through the crowds of our circumstance. And we're attempting to pull the power from you. See about us now, oh God. We lift, us, lift up all our issues up to you. In the name of Jesus. 
we give you glory and honor. And if God, if you do these things, we'd be so careful to give you all the praise and glory. It's in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We do say amen and praise God. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. I hope and pray today, today's worship and word and witness has been a blessing to your life. I hope and pray that after this that you continue to share and like. Help me lift up the name of Jesus and share this this worship with somebody. Let somebody know that we were alive today and let them witness the power of God moving in the life of the Little Rock Baptist Church. I love you and there's not a thing you can do about it. Meet me on Wednesday for Wednesday in the Word and I'm going to bid you farewell now. I'm going to give you the benediction. Now unto him was able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. Let us all say amen. Y'all say it every week. Y'all know it. I love you. There's not a thing you can do about it. Have a great Great week, and I'll see you on Wednesday in the Word.